<laughs> Digital gramophone makes no sense. Hey guys, um, back with part two of my year in review for 2020. Um, today my video is discussing my um, 10 favorite albums of 2020. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, um, music was something that I'm, I'm sure all of us relied heavily on uh, as a crutch this year um, to kind of get us through. And, um, you know, a uh, fellow VC friend of mine commented on my last video recently that um, 2020 was a blur and um, his purchase of music declined about 80% for the year of 2020. And um, he was just not engaged in new releases this year. And honestly, the way the year started out, I, um, I kind of thought that maybe that was going to happen to me. Um, but it actually turned out to be a pretty damn good year, um, for new releases. And, um, you know, these 10 albums that I'm about to discuss, I listened to more than anything. Uh, that's why they're in my favorites. Um, they were the 10 albums that engaged me more than anything. I will say that a lot of the albums in my favorite, in my top 10 are, are, um, are going to be written about in a lot of year-end lists all over the internet. I've looked up a few, um, and I've seen, you know, some of the ones that have been talked about on the VC. Um, and it's not like I'm trying to ignore them or anything. I've had this top 10s pretty much been settled since, uh, since November. <laughs> so nothing that's come out since uh, has, has really crept in. So two of my very favorite... Um, Americana alt country artists, if you will, released albums this year, and they were uh, both really good. Uh, John Moreland and um, Jason Isbell. Uh, also, Kenny Roby's uh, The Reservoir. Um, big fan of his work and Six String Drag, and, and he put out an album that was really, really good this year. Um, that one and Jason Isbell is just kind of just missed out on the top 10. My favorite uh, from that world of this year is actually the album Walking Proof um, by Lily Hyatt. This is her fifth, fourth or fifth studio album. Uh, I think it's her best work to date. I think she's getting better as a singer-songwriter with, with every release. And I think that that's tr the trajectory that you want to be on. Um, and so, yeah, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, the single Some Kind of Drug was one of my, um, favorite songs of the year. Um, the song P-Town is another great one. Um, she has the line, don't you hate it when people say it is what it is. Um, I was talking with my brother one day and he had, had that song on his, uh, year end mix and I was surprised cause he doesn't really, uh, really dive into that world, uh, Americana kind of. Uh, alt country rock world as much as I do and so I was kind of surprised uh, to see that and he was like well I heard that line and and I and I thought well uh, wow somebody else actually thinks like me yeah I think a lot of people don't like that phrase now um was used by somebody this year can't remember who um I just he was a real asshole though I remember that but uh, yeah, I think 2020 in particular was a year to really hate people that say uh, it is what it is. But yeah, Lily Hyatt's Walking Proof from New West Records. Um, I, I just think it's a great, great rock album. Um, for those that find it important, this is uh, John Hyatt's daughter. At number nine, I have Caribou's Suddenly um, from Merge Records. Uh, the electronic musician, producer, um, Dan Snaith, I believe is how you say his last name. Um, yeah, I was a big fan of his albums, Andorra 
and Swim. And his previous album didn't resonate as much with me. Um, I don't know, it's probably worth revisiting because uh, there were some things happening on that album that I hear in this one, but I also there's a marriage of this and Swim, the kind of dance hall, uh, psychedelic dance hall vibes of, of Swim. But this one really pushes uh, into uh, more soulful territory, um, yeah, almost like uh, hip hop beats at times and uh, modern R&B. And a lot of people that know that are familiar with Caribou, um, and as he's, is written about him, you know, even though he's an electronic artist, he's really a singer songwriter. And there's just some really good contemplative material on this on this album. It's it's I think it's uh, one of his best, if not his best. So the the um, next artist is one that has been around for some time. But this is actually the first album of theirs that I've ever really listened to. Um, and now I've kind of gone back and listened to a couple of the previous albums. But um, but this was the first one. This was really my introduction uh, to, to this band, to the group. And it's uh, this is The Kit. And this is their album um, on Rough Trade, Off Off On. Now, Kate, this is primarily the project of singer-songwriter Kate Stables. I kind of first, she kind of first caught my attention guest, uh, guesting on the Nationals album from last year. She toured with them um, in, for much of, of last year. And that's where she um, composed most of the songs uh, for this album. But it's produced by um, Bonnie Light Horseman's Josh Kaufman. He's worked with the National. He's worked with um, His Golden Messenger, and he's also a really talented guitarist. And um, you can hear his contributions on this album, uh, and they're very strong. But this band has such a great sound, uh, as particularly on this album. Um, it's, it's, uh, they're, they're a British indie folk band. I think fans of Laura Marling would really like, uh, this album. There are at times like, um, horns used throughout the songs. There's almost kind of like a, a jazzy kind of feel in some of the tunes, like in the, in the way that you might hear on, you know, some Joni Mitchell records. <laughs> Better try to get out, get outside In your limbs, get out of your head again And the soil you can taste in your mouth But the water might wake you back up again This is what you get, this is what you did This is what they want, why are you still here? This is what they said, this is what you get This is what you did, this is what they want Why are you still here? This is what they said, this is what you get seven I have the greatest acts in the hip-hop game today in my opinion uh, run the jewels RTJ4 you know ever since um, LP and Killer Mike got together for the first time to work on Killer Mike's uh, solo album rap music which is an all-time fave for me um, you just knew and they or they knew in particular that it was a, a happy marriage um, and so when they decided to work together more as a team as a duo you know we've we've just as fans we, we've benefited you know greatly from that so if RTJ1 kind of serves as like their kind of first experiment and really just kind of showed more promise than anything. RTJ2, in my opinion, is their their masterpiece still. I think it's still their best album. And it was it was really pretty much them saying, okay, yep, we're the best fucking duo in hip hop today. And by the time we're done, we're gonna be one of the greatest ever. With RTJ3, it was kind of like, okay, everybody knows how fucking awesome we are. 
and we're just telling you that we're here to stay and that everything that we've released up to this point was no accident. RTJ4 is take no fucking prisoners. <laughs> this is uh, right below RTJ2. Just fantastic. And, and honestly, I'm one of the things that I love about it the most is that it's like only 11 tracks. And there's just no bullshit. And every single track is phenomenal. There's been elements of it in their previous albums, but I'd say that there's a lot more kind of like political power in this album. Look at all these slave masters posing on your dollar. So one of the things about watching VC videos and starting to make my own videos and the interaction with the, uh, the vinyl community is that it's kind of pulled me back in to jazz for the first time and well, to be this focused on it for the first time in, I don't know, 20 years. Um, and one of the coolest discoveries, one that I'm uh, a recommendation that I'm more grateful for than any other that I've received um, or seen since watching VC videos is the international anthem label in Chicago. And uh, even though I only have four of their releases, it's a label that I plan on focusing on grabbing a lot more. Um, one of the reasons why I'm getting rid of the amount of records that I've been getting rid of is to make room for uh, those releases. But this year's album by Jeff Parker and the New Breed has been my favorite one so far. Um, this is just an uh, amazing album. It's a type of jazz fusion that I haven't really heard or, I don't know, since probably like um, Modesky Martin and Woods Combustication or when they worked with John Schofield. And this this is, it's different. It's, it's more experimental than a lot of that stuff. But the sampling that goes on on here and the um, kind of the synthesizer, um, experimenting with synthesizer, that's happening here. It's, this is just a really cool album. And when you first listen to it, it's a bit disjointed, but after several listens, it really starts to kind of pull together. But man, what really pulls this thing together are those last three, those last three tracks. Three for L, Go Away, and Max Brown. Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. And the tone of his guitar and his playing, it's uh, it harkens back to something from the past, but is also very forward moving and uh, very progressive. So at number five, I have Adrienne Linker's Songs and Instrumentals. This is a two LP, the first one being um, just more kind of traditional uh, folk songs. And then the second one um, being two instrumentals, uh, long, longer pieces, very experimental. Uh, I, was, I mentioned in my previous video albums that had been recorded during uh, quarantine. And this is one that was recorded uh, this year around April, May of this year in a very tiny cabin, in a um, rustic tiny cabin in the Berkshire Mountains of Massachusetts. She went there to rent that cabin near some friends, uh, but she started writing songs and just felt like she had loved the sound of the cabin itself and wanted to record. I'll read what Adrian Linker wrote uh, for the liner notes on here. I wrote the, song, wrote, wrote the songs and played the instruments and Phil Weinrobe recorded and mixed them. The only instruments used were the acoustic guitar, a paintbrush, the needles of a white pine tree, and my voice. All additional sounds were provided by the rain, the wind, the fire in the wood stove, the chimes on the front porch, the birds, and the insects of the forest. 
Uh, the direction of the additional sounds was solely at the discretion of Mother Nature. Now, Mother Nature, kind of transcendentalism, if you will, <laughs> is um, kind of a thing that um, Adrienne Linker has really been kind of into lately. Um, you could really hear that in both of the albums that were released by Big Thief last year. One of those uh, was in my top 10. This is just fantastic, incredibly intimate. This album has probably been one of the more cathartic releases for me this year and uh, very, very comforting. Um, I almost, when I listen to it, I almost feel like I'm in that cabin, <laughs> kind of away from everything. Uh, and uh, well, who wanted more isolation in 2020, John? But I don't know, there was just something very comforting in that to me when I listen to this album. Christmas Eve with your mother and sis Don't wanna fight but your mother insists Dogs white teeth slice right through my fist Drive to the ER and they put me on risk Grocery store list, now you get pissed Uncheck calls and messages I don't wanna be the owner of your fantasy I just wanna Number four, I have one of the albums that everybody's been talking about a lot this year, and it's showing up at the top of a lot of lists, I think, this year. Um, Fetch the Bolt Cutters by Fiona Apple. Um, now, I am able to kind of separate the objective and the subjective. So what are necessarily my favorite albums aren't necessarily the greatest albums of all time. And what I think are truly objectively the greatest albums of all time aren't necessarily my favorite albums. So if critics and other fans alike want to give this, uh, say that this is a perfect album and a 10 out of 10, then I, I'm, I'm not going to argue that. Um, I would say if any album has deserved that in the last decade, um, it's probably this one. This is an amazing album, an amazing artistic achievement. Do I rank, do I personally enjoy it more than Win the Pawn? No. But that doesn't mean that I don't recognize its brilliance. She pushes herself vocally more on this album than any other album before it. You've always heard the influence of jazz vocalists like Ella Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday. But on here, there's like a almost avant-garde tackling of vocals um, and the way that they record her, her voice in layers um, and a lot of the tracks. It's just fantastic. And one of the best sounding like percussive sounding albums that I, that, in, that I own. And yet uh, it's, it's at the same time, it's, it's primal and so soulful at the same time. Uh, just, just great, great stuff. I mean, just an amazing album uh, without a doubt. The only reason why I, it's not my favorite of the year is that a lot of qualifier, uh, one of the qualifying things about an album being a favorite for me is that I have to be able to put it on at just about any time. And there are a few songs on this album that I just don't want to hear at any time. That doesn't mean that they aren't great songs. They're great artistic statements, but they're not something that I am just in the mood for <laughs> at any time. Um, but yeah, Fetch the Bolt Cutters deserves every bit of praise that it is getting this year. Okay, at number three, I have Black Is by the very mysterious 
music project, Salt. Now, from what everybody knows, this is a British collective. They don't engage in the pre with the press. There's not a lot of biographical information about them out there. There's more and more information coming out. All production credits are given to Inflow. And Inflow worked with Michael Kiwanuka. Uh, it was a, talk, a much talked about artist uh, in the last couple of years um, with his most recent release. For all intents and purposes, this is a uh, mixed media project. You hear elements of live playing, elements of samples, elements of uh, electronic music, uh, modern R&B, hip hop, Afrobeat, extremely socially conscious album. This was released on Juneteenth. This is powerful, powerful stuff. And uh, the music is just so great. I first heard about Salt on NPR uh, sometime in the summer, late summer, where they were discussing their favorite releases of the year so far. Then I saw Eve, uh, Miss Lady Soul, share this on her Instagram. And um, I'm a big fan of, of Eve's channel and she has great taste and we have similar taste in a lot of, in that, in that world kind of of R and B and, and, uh, modern soul, if you will. And, and so I, I gave this a listen and I was blown away. And this, the vinyl is, is very difficult to get your hands on. Very difficult. Um, luckily Mr. Bongo, the U S store had the, had a copy of this. Um, and so I, I jumped on it. Uh, their companion, I consider it a companion piece, even though they're two very different sounding albums. Uh, this is Untitled Black Is. The other album is Untitled Rise. And that album is a little bit more uh, dance ready, um, where this feels very much like a mixtape. But Rise is fantastic. A lot of people think even the better of the two. I have not been able to get that on vinyl. Um, even the CDs are hard to find. Uh, there are some available copies coming, but I'd after shipping and import prices, I'd be paying like $60, $65 for it. And so I'm just going to hold out and hope that as much as people are talking about these albums, that they will want to press more. Yeah, this album's very much in the vein of like um, Solange Knowles, like a, a seat at the table or um, the miseducation of Lauren Hill or almost anything that was socially conscious uh, that came out of the 70s. Life, life, life. Okay, so this artist was my favorite discovery of the year. Not even close. Um, it's a guy that records under the name of Barty's Strange. And this is the album Live Forever. This is an unclassifiable album. <laughs> you cannot, I guess by default, you would just put it in rock pop in the record store um, and maybe call it an indie rock album. But uh, this mixes and genre bends more than anything that I've ever heard. Uh, it really, and I'm not joking, pulls from every subgenre of rock and roll that you can imagine. Hardcore, emo, post-hardcore punk, uh, indie rock, alternative um, post-punk, arena rock, blues, and garage rock really does pull from everything. Um, 
And then at the same time, we'll just go into straight up hip hop, like in the very next song or um, a uh, almost massive attack sounding trip hop uh, or DJ Shadow trip hop track. Everything except country and actually you can even argue country because there's kind of like a country blues kind of indie folk uh, vibe on some of the songs of this album that are akin to uh, Bon Iver. And, and, it, and it does, it, it, it brings in that kind of emotional indie rock by bands like The National or Bon Iver or Arcade Fire and mixes it with hip hop attitude. It's, it's something, it's, I can't, it's almost impossible to explain. But Bartiz Strange is an artist that's uniquely built to make an album like this. Um, he grew up all over the place. His dad was in the army. His mother was a opera singer, but he spent a lot of years and talks a lot about us growing up, um, probably I guess his more formative years in Oklahoma, played in all kinds of bands like hardcore bands and punk bands and uh, country bands. So he's, he's able to kind of pull all of these elements from all of those different genres and find the things that are in, that they have in common and put them together. The blues and jazz that are uniquely, uh, they are born in America. They are American art forms. Came from black people. And so as a black man, he is also uniquely able to, find, to have that perspective, to find all of these things in common with all of these genres and be able to kind of like put that on display for everybody else to see. So in March of this year, he, he recorded a uh, five song EP of national covers. And that came from uh, the experience of, you know, he's a big fan of that band. He went to see them. He now lives in D.C. and he went to see them in D.C. And he noticed after the show, I don't know why it dawned on him just then, that he was one of very few black faces in that crowd. And so as a fan of that music and making that kind of music, he struggled with where is my place in this world, you know, in this indie rock world. And it's, I, this is <laughs> just a revelation, in my opinion. The only reason why it's not my favorite album of the year is just simply because of this one thing. There's so many different styles going on on this album, and yet it's, it's again, all tied together because it's coming from the same man, from the same mind. But at times, the tonal shift is so drastic that it, can kind of get you catch you off guard at times but this is the future of music guys in my opinion this is the future of popular music and i don't mean popular music is in billboard chart pop music what i'm saying is the form popular music that means anything that isn't classical or jazz right popular music and this is the future maybe everything has been done before maybe there's nothing new so what it is is it's break down those fucking silos and see what happens, right? Break out of these boundaries and see what happens. Hold on, hold on, hold on, yes, I'm the man. Walked across the street the other day to get a grand. Came back to the trap and smoked that shit with my old man. He told me that I'm the hardest nigga out since in my head. I know everybody back here in my block, even the hoes, bro. Smoking in the lot, they call me Toxie Lutter.
So my number one album of the year, the album that I've listened to the most, hands down, and enjoyed the most, was um, St. Cloud by Waxahachie. Now, um, I've been a fan of Waxahachie's music for a little while now. I think the first album that I ever really listened to by her was, what was it called? Cerulean, I think. And it was it was a good album. It, she still was kind of finding her voice, I felt. And then... Um, then she released uh, Ivy Trip, which was a cool album. Really, really, both of those albums, very 90s influenced. So uh, that's why it kind of resonated with me. And then the, there was the, her last album, Out in the Storm, was the one that I really fell in love with. And I think she felt was really like her best work to date and her most focused work to date. Um, and so she toured the hell out of that album. And she really wanted to do something different. And so St. Cloud was really just kind of born out of, as, as, as I've heard her say in an interview, it was kind of born out of her just being tired of playing out in the storm <laughs> on tour. And uh, what you find on this album, and you find hints of in her last, in the EP that came out before this called Great Thunder, is... Um, is a nod to kind of Americana and folk and country, uh, alt country, if you will. And uh, there's actually a wide variety of styles on here. So when I hear people kind of refer to it as Waxy ha as Waxahachie's like uh, alt country album, it's kind of that's kind of a, a misrepresentation in my opinion, especially with songs like Oxbow and and Fire. Fire huh, is just, that's the song of the year to me. I've, I've listened to that song time and time and time again. Uh, the drum beat, it's got a groove to it. It's such a great song. There's also just a lot of really nice introspective lyric writing on this album. Uh, talk about cathartic. Yeah, there's just... There's tough stuff, there's dark stuff, but then there's also hopeful, um, a reign of hope. You know, she's in love now, and you hear that in some of these songs, you know. Um, but there's also a lot of, of introspection, and a lot of that has to do with everything that she's been through. She's um, found sobriety. Yet another artist finding sobriety and actually doing their best work after it. So yeah, that's it. That's my top 10. I don't know how long this is going to be. Hopefully not too long. <laughs> um, but I'll break it up into chapters so you guys can skip through. Um, but anyway. Good riddance 2020. Here's hoping that 2021 is a better year. Um, I hope all of you have a wonderful holiday season. I think this is probably the last time you'll hear from me for, for, for the year. Um, maybe not. I might do one other video, um, but it might wait until after the first of the year. So yeah, I really hope everybody, um, can have the best holiday season that they can this year, but be safe. Please be safe. Um, yeah. And that'll be it. All right, guys. Take care.